Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Introduction to PHP course. In today's lesson, we're going to go over how to set up your development environment. Specifically, we're going to talk about what development environments are, and then go over a di couple of different kinds of development environments, one known as a, lo as a remote development environment, one known as a local. We're going to talk about the software that we're going to be using in this course for our development environment. And then we're going to go over a couple of concepts uh, related to web servers. Um, and uh, what's known as local development. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking about uh, the loop pack IP address, and we'll explain more about that, as well as the local host host name. And we're also going to talk about uh, the concept of a document root. Uh, we're also going to go over a uh, description of the different kinds of text editors that are available and go over our PSPAD installation, which is the uh, text editor that we're going to be using for this course. And then we're going to finish up uh, with a section that provides some additional resources for finding help in setting up uh, your development environment, and then also introducing our first homework challenge. Uh, so what exactly is a development environment? Well, essentially, it's just uh, a, a setup for a programmer to be able to write and test and debug uh, their software. Um, and what we've done for this course is we've chosen a default uh, development environment setup uh, that we're going to use throughout the course. And the reason for that is, is that, um, unfortunately, one of the biggest roadblocks to new PHP developers is actually just getting, up, getting their development environment set up so that they can actually run PHP code and test it. Uh, part of this reason is that um, PHP and Apache, uh, which, as we learned in the last lesson, are two pieces that need to be configured to work together, two pieces of software that need to be configured to work together, uh, can be quite difficult to do that. And so um, we're going to uh, install some software uh, for this course that's going to help ease that problem. Um, for our default environment that we're going to be using, we're going to be running it on a Windows 7 platform. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, I feel that that's the most popular operating system and will be able to reach most of the students out there. Uh, the idea being that uh, you'll be able to mimic what we, the steps that we take in this lesson so that you'll be able to get your development by environment set up uh, with as uh, much ease, or as easy as possible. Additionally, we're going to be including software components as part of our development environment uh, that have a couple of key features. Um, that we're selecting components that are free so that all the students will be able to download them. Uh, we're picking things that are easy to install and configure. And additionally, um, we're picking software that's available for most major operating systems. So even though we're going to be walking through the setup of the development environment on a Windows 7 machine, um, all the software that we're uh, going to be using, with, except for the uh, text editor, um, is available for most operating systems. So you, if you develop on a Macintosh or a Linux or Unix machine, you'll be able to get the same uh, versions of the software they're going to be using. Uh, the text editor, as mentioned, is only uh, available on Windows machines, uh, but there are literally hundreds of text editors out there on the web. Uh, so doing a simple Google search should be able to find you with a um, uh, compatible text editor that will work uh, for use in this course. Additionally, the software that we've chosen um, is well documented. Uh, it has large user base so that there's a lot of information out there uh, that will help you if you get stuck in configuring it. Uh, for example, if the default configuration that we set up in this course doesn't work for you. Additionally, the software that we're going to be using um, is actually software that's used in the real world. We're going to be using uh, the uh, latest version of PHP and also uh, the Apache web server, which is the most common web server uh, that's used in the world. Uh, the other thing to note is that the development environment we're going to be setting up for this course is going to be the same development environment that we're going to use in the advanced PHP course uh, with some slight modifications. So for those of you that uh, continue on in the PHP course sequence here at educator.com, uh, you'll be able to continue to use that same development environment without having to uh, reinstall everything over again. Uh, so one thing I want to talk about first is uh, there's a thing known as remote development and local development. Basically, remote development refers to where you, uh, a programmer develops their code or their websites, their PHP pages on their local machine, and then the way that they test them is by uploading them, typically via FTP, to a remote server um, where they can be run and be tested. Now, we learned in, in uh, um, our last lesson that in order to uh, basically view and to serve PHP pages, we need three pieces of software. Uh, we need a, on the client side, we need a web browser to request uh, uh, the web page to be viewed. On the server side, in this case it's, it's called the remote server, um, we need the Apache web server 
that's able to serve HTML documents and also um, is able to pass on if PHP files are requested uh, those requests to the PHP interpreter uh, so that the PHP interpreter can generate HTML output pass it back to Apache to pass it back to the client so in order to basically be able to um, serve and view PHP pages we need a uh, web browser the Apache web server and uh, the PHP uh, interpreter uh, additionally for development, we need a way to code our text files or our PHP files that we're going to be using. And so we need a, a fourth uh, piece of software that's going to be a text editor. Um, and basically, the way it works in a remote uh, development environment is that uh, typically the web browser and text editor are on your local machine, and the uh, remote server contains the web server and the uh, version of PHP running that's going to um, generate your dynamic web pages. So what happens is, is you'll um, create some PHP file on your local machine, for example, a .php file. And then what you'll do is you'll typically uh, use FTP to upload that PHP file uh, to your web server. Then, in order to test the software, you're going to open up your web browser, create an HTTP request for the particular PHP file that you're wanting to test. And then uh, the typical process for uh, loading a PHP file occurs. Apache is going to um, let PHP know that a PHP file has been requested. PHP will load it from the hard drive, um, parse it, generate HTML, which will pass back to Apache, which Apache then forwards onto the client. Um, so, and this is basically the scenario that happens for those of you that are, uh, have been web developers before that have a, a web host. Um, typically, what you do is you develop uh, the your HTML files on your local computer, you upload them to your uh, web host, uh, maybe to a temporary directory, and then view them there to, to test them out. So this is an example of remote development. What we're going to be doing in this course is setting up uh, a scenario for a local development or a local development environment. And what you can see is that over here we actually don't have this remote machine involved anymore. Um, all of the software that we have, um, that we had in the remote development environment, we're still going to have, but it's all going to be run on our local development machine. So, on our uh, whatever computer you're developing on your Windows 7 machine, we're going to have uh, the Firefox web browser software installed. We're going to install the Apache web server. We're going to have PHP installed, and then we're also going to have a text editor installed. So what happens is, is um, it basically there's a number of benefits to doing this, and a lot of it has to do with um, increasing your efficiency as a um, developer because now um, when you create a PHP file. <clears throat> on, in your text editor on your local machine, instead of having to FTP it across the internet to Apache, um, that FTP simply becomes a local save file to your hard drive. Because your Apache server is running on your local computer, Apache and PHP just need to load that file from the local hard drive, so we don't need that FTP operation, and we limit, um, eliminate one of the uh, network, uh, basically, interactions that takes time. It takes time to upload uh, uh, files via FTP. Additionally, when we want to test a file, we don't actually have to go out on the internet. We just point our browser at our local um, Apache server, and it's still going to generate an HTTP request, but it's not going to go out over the internet. It's going to be uh, stay local within your computer, so that again eliminates another network connection that you have. Sort of another added benefit of this is that by having your web server and PHP all on your local development machine, you can actually develop um, while you're not even while you're offline, while you're not connected to the internet, because you don't need to be able to FTP to a remote server, nor do you need to connect to a remote server to test your pages. Um, the other uh, sort of benefit that you get from having these things installed locally is that you have access to all of the configuration files. For example, for the Apache server and for the PHP uh, interpreter, um, you have access to those configuration files. Whereas, uh, for example, if you are using a, a web host and have a shared web hosting account, you may not be able to alter the PHP configuration. Now, because we're going to be developing, we may want to set some configuration settings that will be useful for development. So we want to be able to make those changes. And also, as we're learning PHP, you can, we're going to be uh, changing some of these settings. And by having that configuration file that we can edit, on our local machine, we'll be able to experiment with different um, settings and it'll help us in learning PHP and um, how to do uh, PHP development. 